Hello, I'm Octavia Randolph, and I'm here at the Visby Botanical Garden, affectionately known as the Botan to those of us who live there, on a beautiful mid-October late morning. I've made some videos here, taking you with me as I've walked in the winter through the garden, in springtime and in summer, and I thought it would be so lovely if you would join me as I take a stroll on this autumn day. Let's go. Off to my right are the ruins of the Church of St. Olaf. As you well know, Visby is known as the city of roses and ruins, and the botanical garden has a ruin of its very own, this stately former basilica known as St. Olaf's. The garden has not yet been put to bed, but soon these benches will be taken in for the winter. The little concrete and stone table will continue to sit out here. But as you can see, there's color happening in the surrounding plants. This little pathway leads us to a small wooden bridge, which goes over a lovely rill, which runs down the length of the botanical garden. I'm just gonna let you hear the water. Soon the water too will be turned off for winter, but it's delightful right now to enjoy it. I'm here standing at the edge of the upper terrace. This is the medicinal or physic garden, the herb garden for culinary and herbal healing plants. Again, you've, you've seen it in different seasons. This is at its ripest level now. There's still some color from late blooming plants. And in the distance, I can see some autumn blooming crocus over by the apple trees. So let's go over there and check those out. We're distracted by the activity of some giant bumblebees as they're enjoying a mid-October feast in these beautiful blue blossoms. And we're gonna turn now and look at the apple trees. We have admired these in the past when they were in blossom. I know they have had many apples, most of which have already fallen. The one in the middle here has still got fruit on it. This is the, it's called polka, that's right. They all have interesting names. This is the polka. And here are the autumnal crocus. We're, of course, in northern climes, very used to spring crocus, but there is a whole variety of autumn blooming crocus. It's a little bit of unexpected color. This fig tree, now far taller than I am, had been cut down to almost nothing in the spring. And you can see how much it's benefited from it. It's not only thriving and healthy, but it still has fruit on it. There are a number of vegetable plants that are grown here in the upper uh, terrace of the botanical garden. This, of course, uh, is asparagus, which has been allowed to go into its fern state. It sits underneath a beautiful vine from China uh, with the intriguing name glass pearl vine. That's the English translation. Uh, the individual berries, as you can see, are almost perfectly spherical and come in shades of a very pale powder blue, a royal blue, and a deep indigo. Absolutely stunning. Geraniums are perennially popular 
and the botanical garden has many varieties in pots. These have lovely variegated foliage. We're up here still on the upper terrace, enjoying the aspect that it gives us over the garden. If the trees were totally devoid of leaves at this point, we could actually see the Baltic. That will come later in the season. We'll end with the little gazebo there, which is always such a delight. We visited the ruin and here come the roses. In mid-October, the Rose Terrace is still quite a bloom with a variety of roses. It's always a delight. I've made videos in the past showing the snow falling on the rose blossoms. They're very tenacious. So here we are enjoying them and enjoying the fall color. Every year these roses are severely cut back and every year they reward that treatment with abundant blooms. There's a nice spot of red color. Even at latitude 58, nobody has told these beautiful pink roses that it's mid-October. We're at the foot of the rose garden now and panning through the Excedra, which at this point in the garden is filled with beautiful dahlias. This orange one right in front of me is called the Bishop of Oxford. This dahlia is called Melody Harmony. And behind me is another prelate, the Bishop of York. I think it's lovely to have a dahlia named after one. This lovely magenta is called uh, Gallery Art Nouveau. <laughs> Gallery Art Nouveau, I like that. I come to the Botanical Garden every day of the year and there are always surprises. One surprise for me returning today is that the garden that was here yesterday has been pulled out. Every year in this formal oval, there is a new garden design which is brought out. It keeps the same outline, but there's a different designer invited every year. This year's theme uh, for the summer was Eld Okvotin, fire and water. And so it was a blue and red color scheme. That still existed yesterday. <laughs> and even this morning when I was on my walk in the dark, it's since been pulled out by our industrious gardeners here. You can see them at work. And these gardeners are planting hundreds of spring bulbs. So their labor today is going to give us great pleasure in March, April, and May. The mallard ducks are very much enjoying their little pond here, as you can see. There was a mallard family uh, in this pond earlier this summer. Very still water now, even though the rill is emptying into it. And I'd like to leave you with two local apple trees, a local variety to Gotland, the Stenshirka apple. Stenshirka is a hamlet to the north of Visby. It literally means stone church. And a delicious variety of apple is indigenous there. And there's a couple of trees that are Stenshirka apples growing here. We might consider this to be mother and daughter, the healthy, vigorous tree, which is still loaded with apples. And then recumbent, but graceful in her decline, is the mother or grandmother Stenchurka apple. I showed you the blossoms on this tree before, and as the 
spring and summer went on, I could see that much of the tree had actually failed to sprout any new growth. So a great deal of it is now dead, and I don't know how long the botanical garden will, will allow it to remain here. Uh, this one bough is still green and still produced apples, which is delightful. It, there was probably 20 apples on this one bough. So it just uh, another example for us of persistence and beauty in old age. So I hope you've enjoyed this little fall walk with me. Being here in the autumn has been a real pleasure. Thank you for joining me.